Hey everybody, my name is Bennett and I'm an independent data engineering consultant. In this series, I'm gonna be showing you ways Meerschaum can make your life as a data analyst easier. Now first, what even is Meerschaum? Well, Meerschaum is a data engineering tool to help you build your time series data streams. Now there's a lot I need to talk about and get into, but I think the best way to help you understand is to show you how Meerschaum works. So the very first thing we need to do is to install Meerschaum. Run the command pip install Meerschaum and this should only take a couple seconds. Now that we have Meerschaum installed, let's get our database running. Now I'm assuming you have Docker installed, but you can also follow this more detailed getting started guide on my website. Link is also in the description. So to get started, run the command mrsm for Meerschaum, stack up dash D, and let's run the services DB for the database, as well as Grafana. For part three, I'm going to show you how to use built-in Grafana service, but for now, just run enter to start the services. And now it's done. Now this step is only necessary if you don't actually have a database already. You can totally use Meerschaum with your existing databases. For the next step, run the command mrsm to launch into the interactive console. Now to verify that we're connected to the database, in this case, SQL main, run the command show pipes. And the connection successful. So we're all done. Meerschaum is set up and ready to get the data flowing. For part two, we're going to be building a pipe to fetch data from a remote SQL server. For this example, I'm going to be fetching data from SplitGraph. Now, SplitGraph is a publicly available Postgres server, but for this, you can really use any database that you like. So to get started, head to splitgraph.com connect, and you can make some login credentials there. To be able to pull data from this source, we first need to make a new connector. So inside Meerschaum, Run the command bootstrap connector. And this will ask us a series of questions to provide the right metadata for how to connect to a data source. So according to this, we're connecting to a SQL server, so the default number four. And I believe split graph is an appropriate label. Now split graph is a Postgres database, so Postgres is option number seven and it'll ask us a series of questions for the login credentials, which we have here on the website. So the database name is DDN. The host is data.splitgraph.com. We need to generate our password. Okay, I have it here. Copy. And finally, we need our username. The port is just the default port. For Postgres, that is 5432. Okay, so these are the attributes for a new connector. Hit yes to confirm, and we're done. So we have our new connector, but now we need to build a pipe to actually fetch data from that connector. To do that, we can also use the bootstrap command, and this time, let's bootstrap a pipe. Now, I have a lot of connectors here on my screen, but what we care about most is the one we just registered. SQL split graph. We also could create a new connector here with this new keyword, but just type the name of the connector, SQL split graph, and enter. It's asking us for the metric or the label for the contents of what our data stream will be. Split graphs gives us an example data stream here on their website, so let's use this query for our example. It appears to be COVID data, so I think COVID is a good label for this data stream. And the location is an optional label for, well, for the location where the data is from. It looks like the data is from Chicago, so I'm going to make Chicago the location. But this step is optional. Now we have to enter the column names. This is important for indexing and the time series optimizations. But what we really need is the date time column. Now we have three columns in our SQL query. The one that's most important here is, well, the date time column named date. So let's enter date as our date time. 
We don't have an ID column, but suppose we had multiple data streams within one query, we could do that here, but I'll skip that for now. And the value column is also optional, but I think this would be an appropriate value column. So let me copy that. And those are the attributes. Hit yes to confirm. We're gonna be creating a new pipe with these parameters. So here comes the fun part. A pipe's definition is the SQL query it executes to get new data. Think of this as whenever you create a new view in a SQL database. The key distinction here is that it'll take our definition and wrap it within a with clause. It'll then take that with clause and then append a where clause to do some optimizations to fetch new rows of data. All we have to do now is hit yes, and it'll open our editor. I'm just going to paste this query. Now, since it's a view, or since it's included in another query, we can't have the order by clause. There is one modification I would like to make. I want to make sure the date column is not null. This will help with the indexing because under the hood, we're using TimesDLDB. But once we're happy with our query, and I think this gives us exactly what we're looking for, you can save and quit. If you're not used to Vim, it's colon WQ or write quit. So the first time you sync a pipe, it'll fetch the entire source and build our target. So let's do that now. This will take several seconds because remember, we don't have any data in our target yet. You can run the command show data and that'll just show the last 24 hours. And it looks like we have data in the columns that we're expecting. Uh, to add new data to your pipes as the source grows, just run the sync pipes command. It'll be much faster now that we already have data because we can do optimizations based on what we already know. So that's it for building the data stream. Let's go ahead and move to part three. Now you may recall in part one that we started the database service and the Grafana service. The stack command is just a wrapper around Docker Compose. So if you're comfortable with the Compose command, any of those will work here. So run stack PS to verify, yes, the database service is working as well as Grafana. In your web browser, go to localhost port 3000. You can log in here on the bottom left. Here, I'll sign out to show you what that looks like. And by default, the credentials are admin admin. If you've never used Grafana, I implore you. It's a wonderful web-based time series BI tool. But for this demonstration, I'll just show you how to make a very simple graph. So on the top left, hit create dashboard, add a new panel, and here's the built-in well, Grafana query builder. On the top right, we know we wanna look at more than six hours of data, say I'll do a year's worth. And down here on the bottom left, we want to select from our pipe. The time column isn't listed here, but I remember it's called date. We don't have a metric column in Grafana, a metric column is like the ID column. And finally, the value is Chicago daily cases. Yep, save the dashboard as COVID. And on the top right here, we have a control to have it automatically refresh. So say every 30 seconds, it'll execute the SQL query and fetch new data. So if on the back end, let's say we were running the sync pipes command with loop, we're continuously executing and looking for new rows. And in Grafana, because we have it set to every 30 seconds, it'll show up and fetch new rows. So I know a lot happened here, but just to recap, I showed you three things. I showed you how easy it is to set up Meerschaum. I showed you how to build a data stream from a remote SQL server. And finally, I showed you an easy way that you can visualize your data source. In future episodes of this series, I'm going to show you how you can add any arbitrary data source that you want. That's with Meerschaum plugins. I'm also going to show you a little bit of the Python API. So if you want to integrate Meerschaum into your projects, you can do that as well. But I have to end it here. So if you have any further questions, please leave them in the comments below or head over to the project's GitHub and I'll see you in the next episode. I just hope Meerschaum makes your life as a data analyst easier. Thanks for watching.